What is up, guys? Welcome back to another episode. Today, we're going to try to simplify as much as possible um, in a short amount of time how to trade the ICT concepts um, on indices. Uh, this can be used for Forex, futures, commodities, etc. So, here we have the 15 minute time frame. Okay. So, Things we're going to be looking for is number one, we're going to be looking at areas of buy side or sell side liquidity. This it's going to be in the form of relatively equal highs or relatively equal lows, as well as gaps in the market that we call fair value gaps. Um, others call it imbalances. Um, these are called PD arrays or you know, targets that the market will magnet to because they're areas of liquidity. Um, now, why does the market want to go to these areas? Because these are areas that people's uh, trailing stop losses are at or limit orders are at. So they're areas that there's a lot of liquidity resting that the uh, smart money or the institutional order flow likes to go to to grab liquidity um this is equal to sell sign um to grab liquidity now um that's the first thing we're going to be looking for okay um you also want to try to think about um you know, your daily bias or the trend, right? Um, where's the market sentiment going? Meaning which direction is the market more likely to go to? Um, this can be determined by um, the trend. Uh, also like, uh, when you look for these equal highs or equal lows, um, you know, wherever the market is at, is it closer to that equal high or is it close closer to those equal lows? Where would it be easier for it to take out first um, and reverse from? So you want to see at where are you currently at? Are you closer to buy side or are you closer to sell side liquidity? Um, so that can help also on your daily bias. Um, okay. So that we want to know where's our, you know, and this, this can change. It can be, you have to be adaptable, um, adapt to the markets, right? Don't predict, don't try to predict, but react, um, be adaptable. Um, your sentiment can kind of change, you know, don't be, um, don't get too caught up or confused, um, but it can change. Okay. So, um, daily bias, you can use top down analysis from the daily time frame to the one hour down to the 15 minute for direction. Okay. So we go to the daily, we can see that we have been in this, we had been in this downtrend, right? They were high, low, lower, high, lower, low, lower, high, lower, low, lower, high, lower, low, lower, high, equal lows. Okay, now we had 
market has been making this push up recently and now we're creating equal highs here okay so what has it been doing um with this pullback right what can you see that the market's been doing is we're starting to break structure here right so we broke this high pull back down then we broke this high here and now we broke this high here so essentially market structure has shifted temporarily um, to to bullish right uh, so clear these out um, now if you look from this last blue candle to this bearish candle before we started this move up if we were to run our GAN box from the high to the low of this wick of this candle this is your range this is how you figure out your range on your daily time frame so you can see market moved from a premium a high price to a discount low price now we've come back up over the equilibrium or the middle part the middle area and we're back heading into a premium now what do you want to do when um, things are at a high price if you have a car that's worth a lot of money you want to sell it in a good high price for a good high price in the high price market right if if price was in a discount right and you're looking to take buys when things are at a good price, right? If you have a car that's discounted, you want to get it at a good price, buy it and sell it up here, right? Makes sense. Buy low, sell high. So now that market has moved into a premium or over premium, we're looking for where it could possibly tap into, um, or if we continue up, right? So, if you see now we have what we talked about is finding those equal highs and equal lows right so this is relatively it doesn't have to be perfect equal highs and now we also have equal lows down here right now like we said to predict where is the market more likely or closer to take out liquidity or e those equal highs, where is it more likely to take out? Is it more likely that it's going to take out these lows down all the way down here? Or is it more likely that the market's gonna take out these equal highs, right? The answer is these equal highs up here because we're closer in relative current price to this area. Now, when we're looking at um, arrays or points of interest, um, we want to look at um, equal highs or equal lows, fair value gaps or imbalances, right? So since we have identified equal highs here that we're close to, what are some other points of interest that we have listed up here that we're close to? If you look here, you have a gap from this bullish wick here to this wick here right you have these three candles and in between there is a imbalance of price during this whole run only sell opportunities or sell side was offered there was no buy side offered in this candle right it was nothing but sells in here right no buys in, the, in here so the market needs to come up and offer this gap as a buy candle meaning one we have equal highs the market will take out liquidity and we also have an imbalanced market that the market needs to come up and rebalance and reprice in order to make its next whatever it's going to do next if it's going to go higher or if it's going to go lower 
So that being said, now we have two areas of confluence that the market is more than likely going to run up into, meaning what is our bias or our analysis of where the price is going to go, go to? It's going to be bullish, right? So that's how you would come up with your daily bias. Now, clear this out since we're bullish, right? Since we're bullish, we would come down to the 15 minute time, time frame. And so the, let me grab this, grab this text here. Okay. So that's how you would come up with your uh, areas of interest. Now, this can be used in, in two different instances, what we'll, we'll, we'll have up here, typed out here. It works on, um, what's it called? Um, external, right? Or otherwise known as higher, higher time frame. What did it be? Right, so that's, Right, that's external external liquidity is what we just did on the on the daily chart is what we just did right now this can also be used and you also use it for internal liquidity okay meaning internal liquidity or the lower time frame liquidity, okay? So this is considered like, you know, your traditional top-down analysis, okay? So what we did on the daily was the top, was the higher time frame to get our direction, right? So knowing that we know we're bullish, right? Okay, now you do the same thing on the 15 minute time frame, the same thing we just kind of did um, on the smaller time frame. Okay. What's awesome is about the next part is we have this theory that um, it's not really a theory, but concepts and principles the ICT teaches about time and price theory. Okay. So this is what I love about this is there's are specific times and prices so it's like we were waiting for a bus you know that, that the bus bus is going to come between a certain time of the day so if you're there to catch the bus you, you're going to catch the bus at that time so um that's a quick little a uh, quick little what's it called uh, metaphor so moving forward we know that our new york hill zone times okay kill zone yep new york kill zone time that is going to be back on uh, 7 7 a.m to uh i like to say noon 12 a.m okay new york time how do you know it's New York time? When you come down here to your settings of your time, you have a set to New York. That way it takes out all the confusion. UTC minus four in New York, right? So now all the times on here are the same times as New York time. And you just try to, try to figure out, you know, the time difference between wherever you're at in the world compared to New York, okay? So 7 a.m. to 12 a.m. is our New York kill zone. Now to get even more precise, you have certain times that you that the market and volume comes in heavy to the market. So you have 7 a.m. is like the start of New York session or New York Stock Exchange. 8:30, 8:30 a.m. 
okay, is a key time because the stock exchange opens, right? So the stock exchange open, okay? Then you have 9.30 a.m. The um, commodities in the Chicago uh, Commodities Exchange opens. So CME opens, okay, 9.30 a.m. New York time. And then you have uh, 10 a.m., which is another key time of on because this is when the news embargo this, meaning anything having to do with news, CPI, uh, non-farm payroll, Fed speech, stuff, stuff like that, usually always happens after 10 a.m. or around 10 a.m. for news, impact news, okay? Medium to high impact news. What's that gonna bring? That's gonna bring uh, more volume and volatility to the market. Okay. Okay. So these are our key times. So knowing that, right, let's simplify that some more. Okay. So coming into our 15 minute time, time frame. Okay. We're going to come back on Friday, which was the next Wednesday, Friday. Okay. Friday. Bear with me. Let's turn this on here. Um, now, I have a really cool indicator that um, I forget where who put me on to it, but I found out someone else that uses concepts. Um, ICT index futures. Okay. Now, this is it's really cool because it sets all the vertical lines for you for the New York Times that we just talked about. Okay. So as you can see. Right in here. Now I'm gonna hide this for a second just so I can for teaching purposes, but that's that's one of the indicate indicators that will help you out moving forward. So I'm just gonna write some vertical lines here. So we have our 7 a.m. open. Then you have your the first or the second time is 8 30. We have 9 30. And then you have 10. Okay. The reason why I say noon on the kill zone time um, above, what well, I wrote above, is because about 11.30 noon, that's when New York lunch, right? People go on lunch until about 1.30, be 13.30. Okay. This is your no trade zone, okay? So that's the time we don't want to be trading. Okay, so now that we have our times delineated here on the 15-minute chart, we're gonna hit replay mode about 8.30, okay. So prior to 8.30, okay. So we're gonna type this out. Prior to 8.30 a.m., we're gonna be looking for relative equal highs or lows to be taken out, okay? Why are we looking for those to be taken out first? Okay, because we're bullish equals equal lows to be taken because we want to buy, cannot type, <laughs> just bear with me guys because we want to buy low, right? Buy at a discount. So we're looking for lows to be taken. We want price to get down to a discount to cheaper prices so that we can buy it at a really good price and it move up on us, right? Okay, so we're bullish. We're looking for equal lows to be taken first. Prior to 8.30, we're looking at where is there equal lows or a swing low to be taken, okay? 
So sometimes it's not easy and you have to zoom out like this, okay? So as you can see, we're gonna make a line where price is at, do we have any equal lows? Sometimes this takes some practice. You have this swing low, right? To these lows, this down here, here. So I would say this swing is relatively close. See how doesn't it's not going to be perfect. As you see to the left, it doesn't really touch too close, but over here you're touching. So if we look, that swing low is already taken, right? So so now we know, okay, the swing low, the equal lows have been taken. Now we're getting ready to look for uh, our possible buy entry signal setups, okay? So step one of this on the 15 minute time frame is prior to 8.30, we're looking for equal highs or lows. Since we're bullish from exter external liquidity, we're looking for internal liquidity, which is these equal lows to be taken. Prior to 8.30, we have these equal lows, which were already taken before the open, just before the open, right? Um, so now what are we waiting for next? The next step now is, um, I don't know where to put this stuff. <laughs> There we go. So our next step now is we are going to drop down to the we're gonna see, we're gonna stay here um, for now. So because we you really want to trade between nine thirty and ten for me. That has been the highest percentage of a win rate. Um, you can catch moves um, 8.30 to 9.30, um, but typically around 9.30, 10, even a little bit after 10 is when I found the best setups running into the lunch no trade time. So our next step is we're gonna be looking and waiting for the market structure shift in the direction that our bias is, which is bullish, okay? Now, how do we find that market structure shift? It's gonna be a swing, in this instance, a swing high, okay? If we, were, if we were bearish, we would be looking for a swing low, okay? So the next step is we're looking for market structure shift. How, what is a swing high? What is considered a swing high, right? This is sometimes can be hard to, to figure out. Um, get rid of this sign. Okay. So a swing high is three candles. You have, you'll have one candle with a high. The middle candle, candle has a higher high. And then the third candle has a lower high than the middle candle. You see that? High, higher high, lower high. Let me see if I can draw this. I'm not the best with the paintbrush tool. Okay, you see this arch here? those three candles see that swing high okay that is what we're waiting for market to be broken on the 15 minute as a swing high now if it was a swing low we're looking for the opposite right and if you look here you have an example right here too okay you have if you look at right where market took out the sell side or the equal lows relative equal lows here you have these three candles here. You have a low, then the middle candle has a lower low, and the third candle has a higher low. So now you have, this would be considered a swing low. Okay, so that would be your swing low, swing high. But for this case, we're looking for the swing high to be broken as market structure shift, as a market structure shift, okay? Now, inside of the market structure shift, Okay, Let's see here. 
when the shift happens, it will create an imbalance or a fair value gap, okay? There's gonna be so much volume coming in that's gonna break that structure that it will create that gap moving the other direction, okay? So we move price forward here. You see, boom, look at that. Huge candle would up, right? What to do? It breaks this high. Right there, it breaks the swing high. That is your market structure shift, okay? Your market structure shift, okay? This is your sell side liquidity being taken. Then you have your market structure shift. Boom, right? We move price forward. Now, like I said, what happens when the shift when when the shift happens, it will create an imbalance or a fair value gap, right? And what does that do? If you see here from this wick, this bottom of this wick, this up here, the bottom of this wick here to the top of this wick here, what happened? There's a gap in price or an imbalance, right? Only buy side was offered here. That's it. There's no sell side being offered at price here. Price was only offered on buy side, meaning the market has to come back to rebalance, right? So what I what I do is I will take a box here and draw my box just like this from that wick to this wick, right? So we have this box priced in. Let me change the outline to black. Okay. Now this is our fifteen minute fair value gap. Okay. Now we're still we're still waiting for that for 9.30, 10.30 for our entries, right? So now that we have this being set up, we're gonna drop down to the five minute and see if we can kind of refine this a little bit more. As you can see, the, the gap was more here, okay, to there. We also have a gap here to here. Okay. Now what you want to do, this is our this is a five minute gap. Five minute okay. At this point, what you want to start doing is working your way down from the 15 minute to the five. I like to go to the two and start refining these gaps in the market. Okay, you can see there's there's it's still kind of the same, um, but if you wanted to you know clean it up you can, um, but um, you want you want this is where it comes down to you as a trader you know what is going to be more towards your personality, what is your appetite risk? Um, for me, it seems like the uh, five minute, the five minute uh, chart looks a little cleaner. Um, a little smoother here. Now, what you could do, Here is, you would want to actually 
when you have this market structure break at nine, be dropping down to these lower time frames. And now I'm constantly switching back and forth. So uh, you can, so you're not, you know, in case you miss these shifts and these gaps, you want to be kind of bouncing up and down um, in real time as the market's coming and, and making your analysis in real time. Okay, so this is now our five minute gap. Um, so what you do is you'd be waiting for price to come back and return into this gap here. Let me get rid of this line though. Okay. Into this gap for your entry, okay? Um, now, if you were to enter on here at the top of this box, you have to be, you have to know that market could also come all the way down and tap into this lower gap here. So as for a good, for good position or what's the word I'm looking for, for um, risk sake, um, you have to, you'd want to put your stops below this. You can put it below this wick here or below this lower swing low. Uh, me, I would put it below this lower swing low here on this candle. Um, keep it tight. All right, so that's your entry that we're waiting for it to come back to. You. Now you can set a pending order if you want or do market execution. I like to wait for market execution because sometimes you can catch uh, a deeper put in here. You can, you know, go 50% of this move. Um, how do you know what 50% is? You just go from, you know, from here to here with the GAN box and you can see, look, okay, so 50% would be right in there for that entry. Now, sometimes it might not, you might not get triggered in or you do market execution and just know that price can is can come back in. Most of the times I will just be okay. As soon as it taps in a little bit into this box, I'm, I'm buying, okay, with your stops below here. Now, um, how do you know where to set your take profit? Okay, that's when we go back to our step one, which was we're going to look for targets of equal highs. In the, well, I can't find that text, but we're going to be looking for equal highs um, on above relative equal highs or fair value gaps. Um, I like to go up to the 15 minute. Like I said, you're gonna be going back and forth, okay? So here you have relatively equal highs here. There, okay. Now you also have um, a gap here. And then you also have relatively equal highs up here, all right? So this is all areas of liquidity for it to target to. Um, now you can set it to the overall high up here for 576 points. Um, let's see, do you see anything else from here to the left? Um, yeah, we have some clean suspect clean <laughs> these are almost too clean um, up here we also have highs up there liquidity up there now ict talks about low hanging fruit right you just want to become consistent you don't need the whole pie just small pieces of the pie over time and you will be consistently profitable and stack be able to start to learn how to stack and scalp your positions right so that being said whatever size position you put on here, these areas of liquidity above are areas that you can you can take partials, go break even, um, or take your whole position, right? So our risk to reward is one to three here. And we can know we can take partials here or go break even or take partials um, here or take the whole thing here, right? So um, drop down to the five minute and see how price 
plays out here. There you are. You're tapped in on the very next candle. And if you don't get in there, you have a chance there. Right? Price taps in there as well. Taps in there. Like I said, you have to be able to be okay for price to come all the way back into this gap. Okay. Now what's crazy is, let's see if this lines up here. Um, like we said, now that was right at 9.30 open, or 9.30 CME open, was this candle tapped right into your entry. Now remember we said 50%, you have this GAN box, right? We're in high to high. Where did it tap into? Just under 50% of this whole move. Now you can do body to body to get um, more of the chunk of the move and the volume to get you closer. Um, here or even 50% of the gap, right? You can do 50% of this gap. Um, will also get you a better RR in there or 50% of both gaps, but you would not be triggered in there. Okay. So like I said, usually I'm okay with just getting in right there at the top of the box, um, putting my risk below and then, you know, we're, we're in there. Now these are different take profits with the overall take profit there. Okay, we move price forward and price just catapults right from that box. What do you know? <laughs> Shocking, right? And we just have a price being a magnet all the way up. It just runs, right? Just like a magnet straight to these areas of liquidity. Got a small pullback, right? But ultimately, right before lunch, TP is smashed, okay? And you would be done right there, 576 points. And now if you're not happy with 576 points on US 30, man, <laughs> I'm scared for you because, you know, that's greed. But this is how, you know, you can catch these, this, these concepts day in and day out. These times, these principles, this setup is the same model and happens day in, day out, same time. It's crazy. So guys have any questions, um, feel free to comment below. Let me know if there's anything I missed or anything you have questions about. Um, also feel free to follow me on Instagram at FX Andrew Capital. Um, give me a follow, shoot me a DM. Um, I do offer one-on-one -on -one mentorship. Um, so let me know if you're interested in that. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Please hit that like button. It helps me out big time. Um, hit that subscribe. And that way you know when I drop new videos like this in the future. And thank you guys so much again for watching. Until next time, trade safe.